Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Robbie Robertson, along with Oklahoma State head basketball coach Eddie Sutton. The Cowboys played just one game this past week, and uh, Oklahoma State was home to take on the Kansas Jayhawks, and what a game it was. Oklahoma State wins it 78-73 in overtime. Heck of a ball game, coach. If you were not emotionally involved, and I was and you were, yes, sir. Uh, and you just turned on uh, to listen to a basketball game or to watch a game or had the opportunity to be there, it was a marvelous performance by both ball clubs. Uh, I don't believe that any coach uh, could be any proud of our young men, and I know Roy felt the same way even in defeat. Both ball clubs went after each other as hard as you can play the game, uh, played wonderful defense at both ends of the floor, and uh, for a fan, it was an outstanding game. Bill Connors, who is the sports editor for the Tulsa World, after I finished my post-game radio show we were visiting, he said it left the crowd even uh, a little bit stunned because uh, he said many of the people waited four or five minutes just to get up out of their seats. Emotionally, they were that, that exhausted. And I know our team and our coaching staff was. I'm getting tired of overtimes. I was going to ask uh, you about we that. We played two conference games. <laughs> two Both two. of them have been in in overtime, but I was very proud of our basketball team. Uh, we had an opportunity to win the ball game and then made some mistakes. Had a nine point lead in the basketball and we're still growing, still maturing. We're still not as disciplined as we need to be, but we are getting better. But I certainly could not fault their effort. Then Kansas had a chance to win it in regulation and that young man uh, will live with that game for mm -hmm. a long time. He missed two free throws with two seconds to go. Uh, he gave us a second opportunity, and in overtime, our team played very, very well, and we won the game going away. Played with a lot of poise. Certainly got your money's worth if you were able to see that ball game. Oklahoma State against Kansas. We'll take a look at the highlights when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. I think the consensus around the league is that the Kansas Jayhawks are one of the better teams in the Big 8 Conference, and the Jayhawks were in Stillwater this past Saturday night. Pretty typical Big 8 Conference game. A close ball game, lots of noise, and the home team won. And a uh, heck of a game, Coach. 78-73. I might add that the uh, crowd was marvelous. Mm. They did an outstanding job, and they must understand that is the big advantage in playing at home. Uh, the crowd was uh, outstanding uh, throughout the contest and played the part of the sixth person very well. We'll show some of the highlights here. This is about uh, four or five minutes into the ball game. Good uh, pass by Darwin into uh, Byron Houston. Byron led a ball club in this game with 22. He scored 52 points in the last two games on 24 shots. Now that's what you call productivity. Good out of bounds play. We break uh, Darwin open. We call that seal. Uh, we screen for his on his man. He uh, comes right back and uh, pulls a magic trick there. Pickpockets the guy. He comes down, and hits the layup. Darwin had 16 points and hit seven out of eight from the field. Three point shot by John Potter. Uh, John uh, contributed, uh, I believe, 14 points in this game. Good defensive play. Again, we forced him into 18 turnovers. This, this is just before halftime, and John hit the three pointer, came back and hit the uh, basket off of the uh, uh, defense, and we go to halftime with a 34 31 lead. Pick up action, second half, good ball movement. Uh, Sean passes the ball over to uh, John Potter, and he had three. Uh, attempts, I believe, from the three-point line and hit one or hit two of them. Sean with a steal. Off to Potter. Crowd went crazy here. This was, that was about as loud as it got all uh, Saturday <laughs> evening. Love it. I want to make a comment about our three guards. This is a, a marvelous pass by Sean into Byron, but it also was a great play on his part to catch the, the basketball. We uh, forced a turnover, that isn't shown here, and uh, we got the basketball and had the ball at midcourt in regulation with 11 seconds to go and threw it away, and then they missed two free throws and then that desperation shot, and this is in the overtime period. Darwin hitting about a 15-foot shot on the baseline. There was a mix-up on Kansas' part. This is right at the end of the ball game. This has put, this put the frosting on the cake. They were pressing, and uh, that gave us uh, the final margin of victory, and Sean throws the ball up to the top of the ceiling. And <laughs> I never very saw Very excited uh, group of young men because they realize the importance of this ball game. If you're going to be in a league race, you've got to win those games at home, and, and you've got to certain you've got to beat the contenders. And Kansas will be a contender. Well, that was uh, 
as good a defensive game, uh, Coach, I think you'll ever see. I mean, both ball clubs just kind of left it all out there on the floor, played tough defense. Neither coach can fault the effort uh, on the part of the, the defense. And I think the defense had a lot to do with the number of turnovers that both ball clubs had. They had 18, we had 17. Uh, if you're going to be critical, neither team shot very well at the free throw line, and that's something mm -hmm. that I know uh, both of us hope that our ball clubs can improve on. I, I want to make mention about our guards. Corey Williams, Darren Alexander, and Sean Sutton are playing about as well as we could ever hope for them to play at this point. They were 13 out of 19 from the field, 11 out of 13 from the field, had seven steals, uh, mm -hmm. rebounded well, played outstanding defense, and only turned the ball over four times in 93 minutes of playing time. Those three players basically were playing the backcourt positions. If we can get better productivity out of our front line, then this team's got a chance to elevate themselves up to a higher level. We're getting super play out of Byron. As we mentioned, he scored 52 points in the two conference games and has done that, uh, and he too is getting better defensively. I'm talking about uh, Potter, I'm talking about Pittman, I'm talking about Matias, I'm talking about uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Hatcher. Brown, those are players that must get better. They must get better at both ends of the floor if this ball club is going to be a strong contender for the Big A title. Big win for Oklahoma State as they beat Kansas 78-73 in overtime. Let's take a look at what happened this past Saturday elsewhere around the Big Eight. Nebraska at home, they continue to move up in the polls, beat Iowa State by 10. Uh, Missouri uh, win another close one at home, two points over K-State, and Oklahoma wins at home over Colorado. So here's the way the Big Eight race uh, looks after the ball games on the 12th. Nebraska, Missouri, and Oklahoma unbeaten in uh, Big 8 play. Oklahoma State and Colorado at 1-1, one and one, and then Kansas, Kansas State, and Iowa State at 0-2. Oh and, and, and I think most everybody, Coach, feels like uh, uh, Missouri, uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Oklahoma State are the top four teams in the league. How, how do you look at that? you agree with that? <laughs> I think uh, for the first time in a long while, the Big 8 has the best balance that we've seen. Uh, you take teams at the bottom half of the league a year ago, they're so much better than they were uh, last year. Uh, the top teams might not be quite as good, but you're still looking at Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma. They know how to win. They've had uh, great teams these last few years, but the other ball clubs are capable of beating them on any given night, and that's what will make this league race just a, an outstanding one for all of the fans around the Big Eight. And the next ball game for the Oklahoma State Cowboys will be on Saturday at Oklahoma. We'll talk about that game a little bit more later on in the show. Coach Sutton is involved in a very interesting radio show. We'll have that story when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Coach Sutton, his staff, and his players spend a great deal of time preparing for each ball game. Once the game is over, the fans go home, and so does Coach Sutton, but not before he fulfills his commitment to a rather unique radio show. After each ball game, Coach Sutton talks to his players, then the media. Then he goes back to courtside and nestles in between radio play-by-play -play man Bob Barry and color commentator Tom Dorado for the Eddie Sutton call-in show. Mo in UConn, thanks for holding. You're on the line with Eddie Sutton. Yeah, I, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but how does Coach see us playing in the Big A? I'm glad we're not playing uh, anyone in the Big A right now. We are getting better, but the uh, teams that we're playing certainly aren't in the same uh, uh, caliber. It is most unusual for a Division I head coach to field live call-ins and make himself so available immediately after a game. It sounds good here in the summer. Now, let me just take us into the winter. Now, what happens in a tight game where it's a close shot or something like that? We lose on a, on a, a shot at the buzzer. Will you feel as good about it? He said, no, I won't feel as good, but I'll come over and talk to the callers. And, and Eddie has a great rapport with the callers that his answers kind of uh, ignite more, more questions. And uh, we continue to build the popularity of this program to where after the Jacksonville game, of course, we had like 15 calls in about uh, 15 minutes. He's an excellent rebounder and he's an excellent basketball player. Uh, and tonight, The show has been well received. The calls have been abundant and everybody seems to be enjoying the openness of Coach Sutton. The uniqueness of this, people can't believe that we're actually on the air. Uh, writers, broadcasters and what have you can't believe that we're actually on the air talking to callers immediately after the game is over. Uh, it's, it's such a unique concept. And Eddie is so good, as I said, 
he had an opportunity uh, after the Wichita State game. People want to know what's going to happen if you lose. Well, he came right on and was just as emphatic, just as informative, talked to anybody and everybody who called, and, and really you could not tell any difference. That's kind of the way he coaches, too. He coaches very consistently. What seems to be on the minds of the fans when they call in right after the ball game? Coach? Well, I appreciate those kind uh, comments that Tom Grotto <laughs> had for me. Uh, when this uh, concept uh, was discussed this last summer, as Tom said, it's a lot easier to say yes uh, before basketball season begins. <laughs> right. And it's a lot easier when you win the game. But I've always enjoyed doing call-in shows. I did them at Arkansas. I did them at Kentucky. And uh, when we came here, I thought that would be one way of creating interest for our fans and giving our fans an opportunity to call in. Uh, we have a Monday night show, call-in show, and we get, uh, there's a lot of interest there, but it gives people the opportunity on the way home from the game, if they live in Stillwater or Tulsa or Oklahoma City, to uh, get my comments on how I saw the game uh, firsthand, and it gives them a chance to get to me. So it's been a very popular show, and fortunately we've won the majority of our games thus far. So you enjoy doing oh, the I show, enjoy. Huh? I enjoy talking to our fans and get, having that opportunity to, to visit with them. All right. Uh, every, every ball game, right after the game, uh, Coach Sutton on a live call-in show. Mark that down, if you will. This basketball team this year for Oklahoma State has a good blend of youth and experience. Uh, two seniors uh, start in the ball club. And one of the reasons for the Cowboys' good start this year at 11-3 is seven-foot senior Johnny Pittman. When Johnny Pittman came out of Terry High School in Rosenberg, Texas, he originally signed with Coach Sutton at the University of Kentucky. After transferring to Oklahoma State, Pittman sat out his freshman year and was primarily a backup player his sophomore and junior seasons. Pittman was a high school All-America, but he is still learning the game. My basketball is ahead of me, and uh, I think by Coach Sutton being here ha has helped me a lot. And, uh, I'm still trying to improve on some basic things I should have learned, maybe in high school. Against Jacksonville, Pittman had a career-high 22 points and blocked five shots. He is playing with a great deal of confidence, thanks to the guidance of Coach Sutton. In practice, he tell us when we shoot the ball, just think of it, you know, win a Big 8 championship or, you know, Think of it as a game shot. Don't just toss the ball up there. And uh, that kind of helped me to be more disciplined in my shot selection. I think my roles are to get some rebounds and block shots and, uh, you know, the scoring opportunity to come if I rebound more. I need to get more rebounds for the team to, to win. The gentle giant continues to develop every day and has become a valuable part of the Cowboys' success story. I'm really looking forward to having a great senior year. Uh, I've been struggling on the road, and uh, hopefully I come around and help the team because if I don't play well on the road, we can't win. You know, I need to you know, do my part. It's a lot of fun when you get to play and you know, people are screaming and yelling. It's nice. <laughs> He's a pretty emotional player too. Uh, Coach, what kind of progress have you seen him make? made a lot of progress. He still uh, has a ways to go, but he's a willing pupil, uh, works hard, uh, and if we are going to do well, he's got to carry a heavy load. Uh, when he made that comment about uh, every day in practice, and this is something we try to impress upon all of our, uh, our players, put yourself under game conditions. Every time you're shooting a basketball, everything you do, put forth 100% effort and pretend like you're playing against Oklahoma or Kansas or Missouri or one of our other Big 8 uh, schools. and. Uh, We've made a lot of progress because we have really driven that home with, with our ball club. All right, Johnny Pittman, uh, one of our features this week here on the Eddie Sutton Show. You stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Last week in Nashville, the NCAA had its annual uh, convention, and this is the time of the year where they pass legislation that the institutions will live under in years to come. It was called a cost-reducing convention and they certainly did that by cutting scholarships in football and basketball in all sports. In basketball went from 15 to 13. They do not go into effect until the 92-93 season. They also reduced football staff, uh, they reduced the basketball staff by one and also in some of the other sports. Uh, 
One thing people must remember, even though it was passed, it doesn't go into effect until the future. And in basketball last year, they passed legislation that took the schedule from 28 to 25. And yet they went home and they got to realizing that basketball is one of the big revenue makers. And so this year they came back and they gave us two games back. So uh, even though they did take away the scholarships, they took away the coaching staffs, we don't have to really live up to that until the future. Hopefully they will go back, use some common sense and say, hey, if we need to reduce or make more money, there's better ways to do it. I really was in disagreement with the scholarships because I couldn't have gone to college without, without an athletic uh, grant and aid. And certainly there are a lot of young people today that can't go. And that means in basketball, we go from 15 to 13. So we'll hope the NCAA and the people, the leaders, will go back next year and take another look at it. Uh, they're not consistent as far as uh, some of the things they're doing, but the president certainly made their impact. They wanted to let it be known that they are running intercollegiate athletics. You could anticipate that going in, uh, couldn't you, Coach, that uh, this type of legislation will probably be uh, proposed and passed? Most people felt that uh, the presidents wanted to let it be known that uh, there, they, there needed to be a reduction in, uh, in costs. And I, I think most coaches believe that, but I really believe there are places that we can go and save money other than cutting staff members. For instance, when they cut a staff member in basketball, they're cutting a grad assistant. And all we can pay him, them is a scholarship, which, which is about $7,500. That is the avenue. That is the way that high school coaches get into college coaching. And that means that they're going to restrict some young people that would like to go beyond high school coaching into the college ranks. Uh, the one area that disappointed me the most in, in Nashville was not restoring eligibility to the Prop 48 casually. Someone who couldn't play, who lost a year as a freshman, they, they play their second, third, and fourth year. They're on schedule to graduate in another year. They've proven that they are a bona fide college student. They ought to restore that years of, uh, year of eligibility, and I think most coaches feel that that should have been done. And if they really have compassion for the student athlete, that would have been a w one way of showing it, but they didn't pass that. Right, very interesting. Uh, last week here on the show, we asked that you, uh, uh, we were in hopes that you would send in uh, cards and uh, letters and ask a question of Coach Sutton. Many of you did, and we uh, appreciate your participation. All you have to do is send your question on a postcard to Ask Coach Sutton, 101 Gallagher Iba Arena, Oklahoma State University, Stillwater, Oklahoma, 74078. This week, our question is from Angie Sear of Stillwater. And, Coach, she asks uh, some of the road games that you've played this year if those games will be returned to Stillwater, teams like Marquette and DePaul in particular. We hope to upgrade our non conference schedule. We'll always have the seven conference games that uh, we play with the other schools in the Big Eight. But Marquette will be returning next year to play in Stillwater, and uh, we hope that uh, we can get a game in time as our program grows where we can take the Cowboys to Oklahoma City and play one non-conference game, go to Tulsa and play one. For many of the fans that we have in those two areas, uh, DePaul will not be returning. That was a tournament. We played two games, and uh, we played DePaul, of course. Uh, we would like to start a home-and-home -home series with DePaul. I think that would be uh, a good thing for our basketball program. The main reason we went to their tournament was for <laughs> revenue because they paid us $50,000 and that pays a lot of bills for women's athletics and for the non-revenue sports and for our basketball program. Okay, Angie, thank you very much for, for writing in and you'll be receiving uh, uh, two tickets to a future Oklahoma State basketball game. Let's take a look at the uh, schedule for this coming week around the Big 8. On uh, the 15th, Iowa State will be home to take on Illinois Chicago. K-State plays at Missouri, Kansas City, and Oklahoma plays at Missouri in a conference game. And then on the 16th, Miami of Florida will play at the Kansas Jayhawks. And then on Saturday, around the league, Oklahoma State will play at Oklahoma, Kansas State at Iowa State, Missouri plays at Kansas, and Colorado plays out of the conference as they take on Southwest Missouri State. And Coach, uh, on the road again, uh, two out of the three here in the Big Eight, uh, early part of the Big Eight Conference schedule, go on the road, take on Oklahoma. Tough ball game. Oklahoma has always been a special game for uh, Oklahoma State University, and it's a special game for the University of Oklahoma. They call it the Bedlam Series, and that's what it's been in all <laughs> right. sports. Oklahoma has dominated the series in basketball during the decade of the 80s. We have not won in Norman for 10 years. So uh, we'll have a tough uh, assignment come Saturday afternoon. 
But uh, our ball club has an opportunity to upset the Sooners. Uh, Billy Tubbs has the best team in the Big Eight. I think uh, most people agree that right now they're playing better than anyone else. But uh, anything can happen in that series. Our young men, if we go down and can control defensive boards, don't turn the ball over too many times, then we have a chance to, to beat the University of Oklahoma. Need to take that crowd out of there too. If well, their can. crowd is just like our crowd, and uh, they are uh, certainly a, a big factor in uh, any time you play Oklahoma. That's why they have such a great home record over the last 10 years. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck to you, Coach. We're out of time. Thanks for being with us. For Eddie Sutton at Oklahoma State University, I'm Robbie Robertson. Goodbye, everybody.